Four. Introducing the Dunkin' Cake Batter Signature Latte. Mission accomplished, everyone. America runs on Dunkin'. Lanny went to college and racked up huge debt. A little bit over $100,000. For a degree he couldn't use? Now what? I had a friend that went to my computer career and they talked to me about it. He was done in just months. I did do it online. They even helped him get hired immediately after graduation. One of the things I love about IT is that you can work from anywhere you want. You could become an IT pro in just months with zero experience at My Computer Career. It worked for me and I know it can work for you. It's not rocket science. It's mycomputercareer.edu. There's a hot new podcast we think you'll like, Variety's Strictly Business. Hear candid conversations about business deals, strategy, and the future of media and entertainment from industry A-listers. Hosted by Variety Business Editor Cynthia Littleton and Co-Editor-in-Chief Andrew Wallenstein. And once a month, Executive Editor of Music Shirley Halperin will join the conversation to discuss the business of music. Listen to Strictly Business on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts. Back to the Jimmy Barrett Show on KPRC 950. Staring at the fire for hours and hours while I listen to you play your love songs. nice picture yeah our house is a really really nice house and it's gone up in value to the point where i don't even recognize the price anymore but i'm I'm wondering and i'll bet you all are wondering the same thing how much longer can this continue will it continue are we going to see home prices actually start to retreat a little bit are we already seeing that thanks to mortgage interest rates here's a guy who certainly knows from his perch up around dallas cliff freeman He's in the real estate business. How long you been in real estate, Cliff? Hey, Jimmy. I've uh, I've had my license for about thirty five years now. Holy so, moly! Have think, you seen some changes over the course of thirty five years, or what? Well, I, let's say I've seen a few ups and downs. How about that? <laughs> That's fair to say. Um, have you ever seen anything like what we've seen in the last year and a half, as far as the rapid increase in home values, especially here in Texas? Well, it has been incredible, not just the last year and a half, but really like the last 10 to 12 years. Um, you know, the housing market has been on a bull run like we've <clears throat> never seen before. It's just been <clears throat> literally quite hot this last couple of years. I guess the question everybody's wondering is, uh, how much longer will it continue to be white hot? Are, are we still in a situation where demand exceeds supply? Because that certainly has had a lot to do with driving home prices up to this point. Well, I think there's still a uh, supply imbalance, but uh, on the other hand, I think we're starting to see the market normalizing a little bit. There are really three things that are that are driving the move right now. You know, inventory nationwide is up 5.6% over this time last year uh, to 419,000. Uh, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon, that's 18% more than last year. And the three things that are driving this, are, again, are that, that insatiable buyer demand that we've seen uh, seems to be coming satiated. And that's due in part to, uh, uh, you know, buyers just being priced out of the market. Um, you know, interest rates are up from, you know, roughly 3%, and they've essentially doubled. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize that for every, at this level, for every increase of 1%, in the 30-year fixed-rate mortgage, um, that reduces a buyer's buying power by about 10%. So to put that in perspective, a $300,000 mortgage at the end of last year would have cost you about 1256 bucks. That same mortgage this year is going to cost you about 1800 Not to mention, by the way, Jimmy, we're in Texas, property tax, you know, king of the world here. So oh, yeah. property taxes are rising like crazy too. That's another, you know, hit to the affordability. So those two things coupled with, and actually we're starting to see some investors with the long-term perspective starting to gather some nuts for the winter here. They're starting to, to cash in <laughs> some of their gains, and we're really going to keep an eye on that and see if that uh, that helps pick up some inventory here. Well, that's interesting because I hadn't heard that before. You're the first person I've heard say that. So, so these these big companies that have been coming in and buying up 
uh, homes and then renting them out, you think they're going to start selling them some of these homes to cash in? Well, you know, my experience is, let me back up for a second. There was a, a recent publication released by the National Association of Realtors that described the impact the impact of institutional buyers on the housing market. Now in Texas, particularly in Tarrant County in Fort Worth, as many as 40% of all the sales last year went to what are called investors. That could be mom and pop LLCs, but it could also be hedge funds that are buying entire subdivisions from you know builders to set up rental communities. So keep in mind, Wall Street operates on a different frequency than real estate does. Real estate is essentially an illiquid asset that takes time to, you know, you can't just execute a trade in a tenth of a second and have your money back. So these institutions who have been chasing yield, the you know, rates have been low for so long, they're just starving for some type of return, have looked at ways to arbitrage this real estate market and they picked the residential market and came in and it was almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. It reminded me a little bit of, you know, back in the day when Bunker Hunt was clearing the silver market, they just bought up houses and sort of created this own demand that, you know, what caused prices to, to go up. So if we see them unwinding their positions, it's something to keep an eye on here because it's not usual for institutional ownership to be this high. That could be a precursor to something bigger that could happen. Okay. You're not talking necessarily housing bubble, though, are you? Because the, the, those of us who remember 2008, <laughs> remember what happened to housing prices and uh, when the bottom fell up. We're not, we're not talking about bad loans and, and bad mortgages and something that could have a real huge detrimental effect on real estate values, are we? Well, let me first of all say, Jimmy, I sleep with sunglasses on. Hopefully, you know, if the sun should come up, I'll, I'll be ready for it. I'm a very optimistic person. Back in the, in the Great Recession, there were about 7 million loans that went south. Only a million of those were tied directly to the systemic problems in the mortgage market. In other words, sub, subprime loans. Those other loans defaulted because people couldn't pay their mortgage. So right now, we've kind of got the Fed walking a tightrope here to keep housing under control without putting the economy, the greater good, into a recession. If that happens, and, you know, frankly, we're starting to see layoffs in a lot of industries, especially in the real estate industry, but in other industries as well. If the Fed overdoes things and pushes us into a recession, that could potentially cause people to not be able to pay their mortgages. Now, having said that, we've got the most equity we've ever had in houses, homeowners do. So it won't be the same as it was in 2008. And I'm not predicting a housing crash. I'm just saying the dynamics here, you gotta look at all the different moving parts because yes, we don't have a problem with loans, but the economy and job growth is what's going to drive this. Housing affordability has gone through the roof. People can't sell because they're going to be overpaying for the next house they buy. We just have to really watch some, a few met key metrics to see what's going to happen you know, as we move forward here. And you know, there's no relief either in the rental market because uh, homes have become so expensive and, um, and home loans have become so expensive that for some people who don't have the down payment money, um, have a family, need a family home to stay in, they have to rent. And, and rents are kind of at all-time highs now too, aren't they? Well, they have. They finally uh, have caught up. Uh, you know, it used to be it was cheaper to rent, uh, you know, net net here in Texas than it was to own. But rents have caught up because that's been, you know, with all the institutional money flowing in, uh, it's, you know, it's there. There are also people that are displaced that would have been home buyers that now are, are renting homes. So, you know, it's again, it's one of those balancing acts. Things just got wonky on us uh, because we had some really what I would consider outside influences uh, on the market. I mean, if you look at COVID, you look at people wanting to move to the suburbs, uh, just the migration patterns of people. You know, we have almost 5,000 people a week moving to the DFW area. I know Houston has gained a ton of people from, uh, you know, the coastal states. And uh, we'll just have to see if that continues. Uh, but there's just been, it's kind of been the perfect storm to set this up for us. Well, that's a great point, too. You know, we talked a little bit before. You know, we have a, what, what is our, one of our favorite phrases around here? Don't California or Texas? 
Um, but you have all these all these folks moving from California who have been paying stupid prices for housing for seemingly forever. They come here and look at what five or six hundred thousand dollars will buy them, and they and they they think they died and went to heaven. They they still feel that way. They still feel compared to California, housing prices here are just so much more affordable, and you can get so much more house for the money. Um, I, I I can I think that the way things are going out on the left coast, I think people are going to keep coming here. And if jobs keep coming here and people keep coming here, that should sustain our housing market fairly well, shouldn't it? I think we're, you know, again, I, I'm optimistic here. I'm not suggesting we're going to have a crash at all. But I think that we could see the end of price appreciation for a while. You know, we've just got too many things that have made houses unaffordable for the average income here in Texas. Uh, you know, California is a story of its own. You know, those people are coming here with tons of equity and taking out smaller loans. But, you know, for the average people, especially for the millennial population right now who's trying to get into real estate, it's become very difficult. I mean, for them, typically the largest impediment to home ownership is that down payment. And with the market the way that it is, all of the low down payment loans like FHA, VA, and so forth, I mean, you're having a really hard time getting those loans accepted by sellers because they want the sure deal. They want cash. And that's what's brought the institutional buyers to a seat at the table is because they're coming in as cash buyers. All right, Cliff, I know you are not Nostradamus by a stretch of the imagination, but make a prediction for me on where you think we're going to be in the housing market here in Texas by the end of the year? Will things have leveled off? Will homes still be selling? Uh, or are we going to go through a little bit of a dry spell here for a while? Well, you know, we still have strong demand, and, and it's a little surprising right now. We've seen uh, house prices uh, tend to, to, to level off here. We're seeing more price reductions. Um, I watch things like houses that are relisted. They don't sell the first time around. Typically, that's going to involve a price cut when they come back on the market. So what the, the short-term tea leaves, I think, are telling us, again, is that we're going to see a normalization taking place. We are at record high prices. I don't see prices continuing. The velocity at which prices have been increasing has dropped significantly. I think we're at an inflection point. Personally, we're, we're probably not going to see any more price appreciation for some time. I'm not suggesting that prices are going to go down. The demand is still there. It really depends on the Fed. A lot of it does and how they delicately handle, you know, this monetization of debt that they're doing right now with raising rates uh, and, you know, really making houses uh, less affordable. Now, Jimmy, can I just point out one thing? Sure. Please don't confuse the Fed funds rate, which is what the Fed controls, with the rate on thirty-year fixed-rate mortgages. Right, Treasury they're, bonds. They're right? really not. Yeah, they're really not connected. Thirty-year fixed-rate mortgages are priced off of the ten-year, which is a further outlook, you know, on what the economy could be doing. In other words, investors typically you would pay more money to borrow money for a longer term. But I want to point something out to your audience here, and that is. There's been something called a yield curve inversion that's been a really good predictor of recessions in the past. And that's when long-term rates are lower than short-term rates. In other words, it costs more to borrow for a shorter period of time than it does for a longer period of time. If that happens, that could be a positive for mortgages. And so I think that mortgage rates potentially have reached a, a plateau here. I don't think we're going to see you know, seven, eight, nine, ten percent mortgages because there is that factor of pushing the economy into a recession and the yield curve will read that. We'll know if the is the percentage likelihood of an infl- of a recession goes up, we'll see that yield curve curve start to, to steepen and it'll invert. So it's just a very unique phenomenon. But it's a very good predictor of things. All right, sir. Good to talk to you. Appreciate all the great information. Uh, continued success, and I hope we get a chance to talk again, Cliff Freeman. Thank you, Jimmy. Tell all my good friends hello down in Houston. I was there 20 years <laughs> with graduate of Rice and, and miss, miss y'all. Well, come on back. We'd love to see you. Take care. <laughs> thank, thank you, sir. Have Real estate weekend. expert, you too. Real estate expert Cliff Freeman here on AM 950 KPRC. Quick little break. Back with more in a moment. Jimmy Barrett, AM 950 KPRC. As a social worker, you can become an advocate for those who can't. Earn your master's in social work degree online 
to learn strategies to connect diverse populations with the critical resources they need to improve their well-being, whether it's in a hospital, community service agency, or another.